Ah, yes, it is another edition of yes. Overreaction Monday, yes. but the first we've ever done without games being played. <laughs> it's the Scouting Combine edition of Overreaction Monday. Right. Rich Eisen along with Chris Brockman. Good What's to up, see you, brother, sir. Man? How are you? How's it going? How was Indy? It was, uh, it was great. Looked awesome. It was great. I, I will say this. Broadcast um, was phenomenal. I know they've already announced that the Combine is in Indianapolis next year, but it mm -hmm. seems to be going on a year-to-year -year basis because the league is trying to figure out, do they want to take it on the road like it's the draft? I say no. I say no, too. Yeah, keep it there. Uh, I, I understand the league's um, thought process, and I know personally the uh, commissioner does not like to let grass grow underneath something just because it's the way it's always been done. Right. Like Roger Goodell always, since he took over the commissionership all those many moons ago, put everything up for grabs in terms of being reimagined yep. or rethought, recast. However, honestly, he, he's always up for trying to see if anything can be improved or changed. That the the idea of like, well, this is the way it's always been done is immediately makes him probably want to change something. Um, but that said, just the mere convenience of the stadium in proximity to the hotel where the players are, in proximity to where other hotels are for everyone to stay there, from uh, coaches to scouts to media to agents to the proximity uh, to restaurants uh, and how you can walk around. And it's a connected city. You don't have to go outside. And it's apparently it's also a connected city from, I didn't know this until this year, that prior to building, uh, prior to building Lucas Oil Stadium, they connected the stadium fiber optically to the ho the hospitals in the area. Oh, wow. So if somebody takes an MRI in the stadium, oh, it immediately boom. goes to the hospitals. Wow. And something can be looked at fast. And so I, I, I just would find... The, the general sense I got from people were that if they changed it to go somewhere else, there would be less participation mm. for coaches and whatnot. I think that the adding of the fans and creating atmosphere and that's just more great. energy in the building. I thought that was a great fix. I agree. And it was a great week. So that's my long winded okay. answer to how it was. This overreaction Monday, as always, is brought to you by our friends at Game Time, the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use our code overreaction, and you get $20 off your first purchase. Are you ready, Chris Brockman? You got a whole bunch of stuff Let's coming go. off of Let's the scouting go. combine. Coming Free agencies combine. around the corner. There's uh, lots to talk we'll about. To that next week. Hit it. Hit it. That was terrible. That was crap. That was garbage. This place sucks. Overreaction. <laughs> Mondays. Monday. All right. Christopher, what okay, do you have? Okay, Rich, it's all about the quarterbacks. It's always been about the quarterbacks. DJ has four in the top eight. I'm going to say five go in the top 20 this year. Oh, that's that's a that's a given. I think that is not an overreaction. A given. Yeah. The first three quarterbacks may go off the board in the first three picks. And if Drake may doesn't go third overall mm -hmm. and suddenly Marvin Harrison jr. Is off the board and then Drake may drops to four and there's Arizona sitting there. Does somebody swap spots with Arizona there? Do they not take Malik neighbors? Do they get more picks and keep on dropping down? Because I would say the Chargers would love to get out of five if they could. So that would be a spot. Mm -hmm. And you'd want to leapfrog in front of the Chargers, which is my point of saying, if it's not the first three picks, it's definitely the first four or five picks that three goes. And then I think J.J. McCarthy gets pushed up into the top 10 by somebody at 11, 12, or 13. Minnesota, Denver, Raiders popping back in because it's not too far to go at seven for the Titans might want to trade out. Yep. Eight, the Falcons may just take McCarthy or Penix. Uh, I think top 20, five quarterbacks going, that is not an overreaction right so now, even think, though there's a ton of receivers has played his and way tackles. The 20 now. Yes, I, I, I think After that, what he did over the weekend. I think it's not just what he did over the weekend. I just think that there's no doubt in my mind quarterbacks get pushed up, that they get pushed up. Especially the closer we get to the draft. Right, and, and then the fascinating one would be if the Steelers 
stand pat on Pickett and stand pat on Pickett by also just bringing Mason Rudolph back. And they're sitting there at 20 and Penix is sitting out there. Do the Steelers make me a profit or they Mm. just make me silly for saying this is not an overreaction right now? I don't have it, but I saw a mock that had Penix to the Seattle Seahawks. What number are they? That's again, I don't know, but I was like, okay. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's, I, I, that's well, I, I would, uh, I'd proffer to say that uh, this is not an overreaction. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of shocked to hear yeah, you say that. You thought you'd start with me calling something an I, overreaction. I did, I did actually. Okay. Well, maybe in a couple, maybe in a month, I'll have six in the first round. We'll see how that goes. Well, I've got the draft order right here uh, for the National Football League draft, and the Seattle Seahawks are drafting 16. Okay. So you just basically said right there, you, there, you saw that, a mock where it's five in the that's first. That's what I saw on yes, Monday. Sir. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, New, Orleans, New Orleans 14 also. Oh, I mean, they, yeah. they might be looking at, Pat, you know, post Derek Carr. Uh, I don't think that's an overreaction. What else you got okay. over there? Uh, the story of the weekend at the Combine, Xavier Worthy, Rich. That was incredible. What a moment. 4-2-1. He's a lock to go in the first round now no. after setting the Combine record. I don't think so. I don't think so. Lock in the first round? I, I would, that's an overreaction there. Chiefs at 32? Why not? Because um, I would take, say, Lad McConkey to go to the Chiefs over Xavier Worthy. He had a good combine. Yeah, he did. You know, like if the Chiefs are looking for a wide receiver, it's funny, Daniel Jeremiah was saying during the broadcast, and you'll hear him on Tuesday's edition of our main Black show, flagship show, show, yeah, yeah. Um, that uh, the the Chiefs are now in the realm of the Patriots of back in the day. Everyone's just like, oh, God, that guy looks like a Patriot. That guy is, <laughs> is the last guy that you want to go to the Patriots because he's going to go kill it. No, the Chiefs yeah. are now in that position. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Lad McConkey being 32nd overall and being the guy that can go. And now with R- Rasheed Rice and Kelsey and what we expect to be maybe his final year, that's the way you go to work. Uh, unless some left tackles are available. Yeah. And that's my point as well to try and answer this question is that there are so many talented tackles. There are so many talented wide receivers that I don't even think Xavier Worthy, despite how fast he is, he's going to beat out a bunch of guys um, that are top 32 for sure. Mm -hmm. Then you've got those tackles and those receivers and the quarterbacks that we're choosing that uh, then you've got about three corners I'd imagine two, if not three, front seven guys. Yeah. I, I don't think Xavier Worthy is going to be a, a first-round draft choice just because he ran a 4-2-1. He may. He's on people's radars the day, now, though, that's for sure. I, I know that, but I'll, I'll call okay. this an overreaction. All right. Uh, let's stick to wide receivers, Rich. Marvin Harrison famously did not work out, didn't even show, no-showed for right. his interview portion. He's not going to be the first wide receiver taken in Detroit. So who would be? Roma Dunze over him? I got to say, he... Uh, Kind of showed out over the weekend, right? I know he did. Would uh, it be Malik Neighbors who also didn't do much? Neighbors, but we'll see his pro day coming up this Listen, month. Uh, I, I was told Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, did everything he needed to do with the meetings. Okay. Um, he met with the teams that wanted to meet with him. Okay. And that he was just, um, he was just so good on the field that he asked everybody in the meetings room, like, do I need to do anything else here for you? And they essentially all said, said to him, no. no. Do we know what teams he met with? I don't know okay. which teams he met with. Maybe that'll get but out. But apparently he showed up. He did what he needed to do in terms of the meetings rooms mm-hmm. and asked everybody, what else do you need to see from me? Is there anything else I need to wow. do? Okay. And that's like that. why he did his workout weight and reps with the defensive lineman who did it first. So he, I think, had it pegged to just get out of Dodge as soon as he was done with the meeting rooms. And just this is the way it's going to go now, man. You know, I, I totally agree with Mike Florio, our friend from Pro Football Talk. He put out a, a post. He wrote a post to say that he thinks one day we're, we're nearing the point where a player will just say, I'm not going to the combine, which is going to be, I think, an, a, um, an annoyance. Yeah. Um, this player really better be the surefire first overall pick of the draft if he chooses to take that approach. Mm -hmm. But do you really think the New England Patriots, if they want to take him because they've already 
gotten the quarterback position filled through free agency that they wouldn't take him third overall because he decided to leave. And there was some miscommunication apparently with the combine that they didn't know he had left already and ha- held his podium to say he's coming. It wouldn't dissuade me from taking him, no. but so that's know, the I, point. I'm not running, running a team or, you know, in charge of personnel. And Plus Marvin Harrison senior wasn't the biggest talker, right? So kind of maybe pass it down to his son. I, I, I would be really stunned. Although Roma Dunze was really good and really terrific. And a bigger, faster Devontae Adams. And kind of, well, I mean, kind of did the opposite of what, how Marvin Harrison handled the combine where he spoke. uh, He was engaging with everybody. And he wouldn't leave. And he, he, he he (laughs) just would not (laughs) stop running. He did the three cone drill when everyone was gone. He kept clipping the one cone. right? Right. And, and I saw a video DJ showed me Daniel Jeremiah of, the final drill, one of the final runs at the the uh, three cone drill that he did, mm-hmm. the um, he had, there's a shot of the timers that were there, that were so surprised by the numbers that they saw on the stopwatch that even though he did do the the drill without touching the cones, they made him do it one more time because they thought there was a malfunction. That's how good he is. But I don't think it's still going to prevent Marvin Harrison from hearing his name first in the wide receiver class. He's going to have a real short night in Detroit. He doesn't last past four, right? He doesn't last past three, pal. Oh. I, I don't. Well, well, wait a minute. Past four because the Patriots have, have traded down or, or the, the Patriots, Patriots have made the quarterback or yeah. they trade down or something? Yeah, I mean, Arizona will four make him first a... off the board if yeah. it's quarterbacks in a row. Right. They'll take Marvin Harrison Jr. in introduce him to Kyler Murray and a pew, pew, in, in, yeah pew, pew, pew. Oh, by the way I saw him at the uh oh, yeah? at the combine and yeah we had a nice chat okay I but told him little, congratulations I told him there, I said I said okay. you had a good season to Jonathan Gannon he goes we only won four games I'm like yeah but you were in every single game uh, expectations were zero he had the yeah. same approach <laughs> as we have had talking about him you tell him he was solid hey I did John, not tell he was, him he was solid I didn't tell him all right. There were fireworks in our conversation. Okay, great. Well done. Thank you. Uh, I think this is kind of spicy, Rich. Speaking of Roma Dunze, if the Bears yes. take Caleb and Rome, yes. they're going to have a top five quarterback wide receiver trio this year. Um, Man, it really does depend on how fast Caleb gets it. That there's going to be some, one would think. Um, I think he's going to be awesome. <laughs> some some form of getting used to it. Unless, do you really think he comes out like Cam? Like first I think game, he comes out three hundred yards. Yeah, it's possible. And, I think you it's know, really possible. Because I mean, Patrick Mahomes' first few starts in the NFL, oh, in yeah. his first full season of being the uh, Wait, quarterback, fifty touchdowns that year, dude. He was insane. Yeah. He had a six touchdown game, I think, I think at one it's point. It's going to be possible that Caleb uh, is listen, just unbelievable. Caleb Adunze and DJ Moore. Yep. Now I'm talking. Is a significant trio, and of course, you'll also have a run game that we imagine will be improved. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Cole, then Cole, Cole Komet. Cole Komet coming on last Dude, year. That's why the Bears fans should be so jacked up. They and I, be. I, I, that was my number one. Rumor I heard at the combine is this thing's toast. That as much as Jaden Daniels had a better final year mm-hmm. than Caleb did, and they're both Heisman Trophy winners, that the Bears are still taking the Heisman Trophy winner from two years ago over the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. I think that thing's done. I think it is. And so I don't think that's a top five trio. Top five. So quarterback wide receiver. Hold a minute. Oh, okay. Travis hold, hold, Kelsey hold, hold doesn't on. count in there. So a wide receiver. Wide receiver. Um, Two wide receivers. Quarterback. I think Tua Waddle and Tyreek are still okay. Hold top on. right. Okay, I, I agree. Uh, I'm assuming agree. Burrow's back healthy, and we've got Jamar Chase and uh, T. Higgins has been franchised as the as a part of this conversation. He might get traded, but that you have to include that there. Sure. Um, Eagles. Eagles, Hurts, and A.J. Brown. And Devontae Smith. And Devontae Smith. Yep. Um, hmm. We don't know about Cousins and who else is going to be there with Justin Jefferson. No. Nope. I mean, good Addison, obviously. but Not uh, Niner, uh, Niners? You want to put Purdy and Debo? Purdy and, and Debo and Ayuk in there? I mean, they're in the conversation, right? Or, dude, 
Stafford, Cup, and Nakua okay. is top five. Okay. I hear right? you. That's top five, I right? I hear you. That's nice. So we're sounding it out, and this makes me think this is more of an overreaction. <laughs> is now my first reaction was, you got, you're got, you on to something here. Uh, I don't know. But now that I'm sounding it out, hey, dude, okay. now we're sounding it out. We're just talking. I mean. What about uh, I mean, Stroud, Nico, and Tank Dell? They're in the conversation. You have to, based on what we just saw this year from, from that group. Odell, um, Zay, know, and Lamar? Odell, I don't think he's going to be back in Baltimore. Okay. I'm already hearing that. Okay. Um, so I don't know who they're going to add. But, uh, but by the way, Stafford, Cup, and Nakua That's a nice one. is top five. Great pull. All right. So I'll call this an overreaction. Now okay. that, I, that was like a who wants to be a millionaire hey, answer. Like, hey, I sounded friend, it out. Friend. Regis, my oh. final answer is, is overreaction. Nah, it's going to be nice. Game time tickets. Get the app and put it on your phone right now or mobile device and start buying tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Susie on Monday night took Cooper to a hoops game here in Los Angeles, got the tickets through game time, and we were going back and forth about how much it costs, and we were going back and forth about where the seats are because you have a view from your seat. You get the all-in pricing. It made it so easy for us to make a decision to say, those are the two tickets. So Sue's taking Cooper Nice. To a game on Monday night, and game time made it so simple. No punches pulled. You can get last-minute deals right up until tip-off or when your event starts, um, and even an hour after it starts, by making sure you take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time by downloading the app, create an account, and use our code OVERREACTION. You get $20 off your first purchase. Restrictions apply. Visit GameTime.co for terms. Again, uh, by the way, GameTime.com for terms. Again, create an account, redeem the code, spell it O-V-E-R-R-E-A-C-T-I-O-N, $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Again, it's GameTime.co. Sorry to keep changing it up. GameTime.co to get your $20 off your first purchase with the code overreaction. All right, second half. Boom. Hit it, Chris. What do you second got? Second half, Rich. More quarterback talk. Kirk Cousins. He's going to be somewhere else. Other than Minnesota in 2024. We had Kevin O'Connell in the booth during our combine coverage. Okay. We had him sit there with Daniel Jeremiah and uh, yours truly. And the day before he was coming around, Mm -hmm. making the rounds and um, said, it was funny. He goes, you get one Kirk Cousins question. (laughs) Like pre, pre, wow. You get one. I'm like, well, what if the over under (laughs) is one and a half? Because maybe get a push because I might need right, like, I might need I might need a follow, a follow up, up but a I won't I won't be all in on following sure. up I'm not going to grill you. I said, what if it's one and a half and you take the under? And, and he goes, okay, okay. It's kind of like a curb moment. Like, he agreed to okay. those terms. Okay. So um, so I asked him like, what what uh, is the status between you and Kirk Cousins? And his answer was quite fascinating, where he said Kirk's a process guy. So he knows he's going to go through the process of being a free agent. And he hopes that, you know, that at the end of the day, they'll figure all something out. And he comes back that he didn't say that those words, but the indication was the indication was there's ways of looking at it. One that he's sharing that he's a process guy that he's going to hit free agency to kind of prep the Vikings fans that he's going to hit free agents. Okay. Two is that they're not going to franchise tag him, although they might not have been able to anyway. Three, all right, the other indication to me is it's kind of setting it up that if we don't sign him. Not my fault. Or four, this is his way of saying he's not coming back. I don't know what it is. Hmm. I, think, I honestly don't I know what it is. This is kind of one of the sneaky big storylines as we get well, ready for free who's agency. Who's going to want to pay forty to fifty million dollars for a quarterback? A team that thinks that they can win right now. Well, take a look at them. I mean, uh, the Falcons appear to be that team, right? I think they think that they can win right okay. now. And they also didn't want to spend that sort of money on a quarterback, which is why they didn't want to go for Lamar and give up two firsts as well as that's, sign a contract that, that, that the Ravens might likely. just match. Right. So it's a different sort of free agency. Yep. But the the money's there. I mean, the slot is there, one would think, because mm-hmm. they don't already have somebody that's insanely expensive. Um, the Raiders 
have moved on from Jimmy G. I Jimmy think, G getting popped. That's a spot for right. for uh, for what PEDs There's or whatever. Something helped the, save the Raiders some money. But we're not really talking about Kirk Cousins for that team. Nobody is. But I mean, I think Ian Rappaport on Monday's show even called that unlikely. Yeah. I don't think the Steelers are 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 going to no. do that. I mean, New England has the cap space. But that's an older guy. And right. Lot, and they're not lot, ready for him. They're not ready to win with no, him. No, New right England's now. not going to make the playoffs next year. So it makes anything, sense so. for him to return, but there is a there is a sense where uh, I I I don't I think he's going back there. I think he's going back there. For a hometown discount? I don't or? know. But I can't call this an overreaction. I can't say that you're out of your mind. So I'll, I'll, I'll call that just because, again, okay. the fact that I heard he's hitting free agency is what Kurt, is, at least that's what Kevin O'Connell said uh, on the weekend, bef- two weekends before the this actually happened. window. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What else? Okay. We're going to, we've talked about this a lot. We had some phone calls on the Monday show about it. I think the Steelers would be insane to run it back with Pickett and Rudolph this year. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> But what are the alternatives? There's lots. Give them to me. Justin Fields. I like that one. Russell Wilson. Kirk Cousins. The draft. There's there's six guys who have first round ability. Well, they're twentieth overall, right? So they are in. What if they? Penix, what, Bo Nix. What if they want another receiver? What if one of these studly receivers are sitting out there? Oof. I mean, the Steelers could really add another nice new weapon. And but but the issue is I think getting the weapon they the ball. Really like Kenny Pickett and feel I just, why? like because they they've won with gritty guys before. I know he's not Big Ben, but he's a Pittsburgh guy. They love his work ethic. They love everything about him, man. For real. So I, I kind of. I mean, think, I guess it's not for me to get, but I don't get it. Well. Here's why, okay, is, and I understand it, we just saw, again, what you need to have, who you need to have to win it all in this league. We've seen it. Yeah. Okay. We've seen it three of the last four years. Right. (laughs) But you've now also seen somebody with some significant moxie, heart, guts, heads, ability to run, pass, in Brock Purdy, surrounded with the right people and the right system, mm-hmm. you can win a Super Bowl with Brock Purdy. We just saw that. Brock Purdy took a lead in overtime of a Super Bowl. Okay? So their thoughts are, we've got Pickens. Right now, Deontay Johnson, there's you know, rumor, I guess they're wanting Maybe to trade him. him yeah. Well, it's because they don't want to pay him. Right. And there's so many talented kids in the draft, just get another one. Well, that didn't uh, work out for the Titans. I understand, but I think A.J. Brown's a little bit better than than Deontay Johnson. Sure. Significantly. But I understand your point. Yeah. So this is the thought process behind the Steelers, that all we got to do is surround them with the right people, and we've already got some good people, and Arthur Smith's the coordinator now. Let's go to work with him, as opposed to trading a night two pick for Justin Fields, who we will have to hire and make a fifth-year option decision on within two months of hiring him. And then you've got Pickett on his first contract, too. And then what are we going to do here? You know what I'm saying? Like, because Pickett's sitting there. What, are you going to have Justin Fields look over his shoulder because the, the, the favorite son from two years ago is on a rookie contract, too? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I, that's fan, what I'm saying. I don't know if the fans are behind Pickett. It Insane s- is a tough word. It's a tough word, but I understand why fans are going to be like, we we need our own Mahomes, and he ain't it. So, but what if he's the Purdy? Right. Well, Purdy did in his first two years. In, in his understand. first two years, Pickett has 13 touchdowns. But he also didn't. He didn't have. McCaffrey or Kittle or come on now. I, yeah, I, I the guess. weaponry there is really impressive. Yeah. And, of course, the guys and the headset is the one calling the plays. They finally seem to have gotten that right, too. That's so did, their thought process. Okay. So, well, I feel like we're going to be talking I'll, about this. I understand it, though, but I'll call that an overreaction okay. at the moment. All right. A couple of things we uh, we didn't get to that haven't been too talked about much. All the new rules changes. I'm sure you heard a lot about this. The mm-hmm. onside kick, all the kickoff stuff. 
it was so confusing to me. The onside kick should be a fourth and whatever play. Any other tweak is pointless. Oh, I'm with you. Pointless. But that's too much for the league. The league thinks that's a gimmick play. Fourth and whatever. You know, what is it? Fourth and 15 from where? Fourth and 18. Whatever. But the from problem with that is, and why, wouldn't, the ball off. Then why wouldn't somebody constantly just keep on a pass, you know, interfering with a pass? Why wouldn't they just blow somebody up? Why would you play that straight up? Well, if the defense Be, commits a penalty, then it's oh, then it's, then it's an automatic first down. You're going to really have that happen? Like you're going to put it in the well, vagaries then, of somebody just grabbing well, a jersey. It, now suddenly you, you've lost okay. possession of a football? Treat it like a Hail Mary then. Which is what? You never call the penalty? Never, but it has to be insanely egregious. But, it's, it, but that's just one launch into the end zone. But what they're explaining now and all this different, like the XFL rule this, or something, it was so confusing. You it, had to read it, it, it ten times get, to I know figure that, it, it out. It can get explained a little bit better. It can get codified a little bit better. I, 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 need a, I need to read this. I do love this idea, but every single time we talk about it with Pereira, or Blandino or or Sterator or anybody who's been on our show, they're like, well, where do you place the ball? And what happens if there's a penalty on it? You can't just, it can't just be an automatic first down where suddenly the defense gets a bad call on them or somebody gets, you know, toasted and they pull on somebody. And now, now you've lost possession of the football and your entire game that you've been up by two scores in, it flips because of one defensive penalty. Why don't we just try it for a year and see what happens? But what's the it? Again, where do you put it? Where do you want to put just it? Put it where they kick off. Put it at the 30. The 30. So your first down's on the 45-yard line. Or the 48 line. or whatever. It's a fourth and 18 play or okay. something. Let's, and then just, it, let's just, just try it. And then the it is what? What if there's a penalty on it? Let's just see how many times it happens. Well, I mean, I guess it would be, I'd rather, instead of it being a fresh set of downs, it's a five-yard penalty yeah, or, ten like, yard, or a ten-yard penalty. Or if it's, you know, if it's a holding, it's but five But it's not yards. an automatic not first an automatic. down. Now it's fourth and 13. What if it's pass interference, though? Five yards, fourth and third. You got to complete but the But that's pass. what I'm saying. It's like anybody that goes past the 18 yards, so then you get, you're, you're giving a free reign to the defense to yeah. just keep on messing with your I receiver and blowing them up. Like I'd ra- I'd rather just keep on hitting somebody. I guess my point is the onside kick used to be something that was super exciting right. and it actually happened. Well, what, what and they now ended up doing and now it's down to like 2%. Well, it's what they ended up doing is they came up with a rule for kickoffs about having a certain number of people on either side of the kicker, right? To try and make it safer. And now this play is, is become out. It's, it's been, it's been totally destroyed yeah. because of it. So let's come up with a better way for the onside kick to work. But I let me, just, I need, I need to read know. the, I'll just push back and call this an overreaction. I, I do love that play. I do I love the like, idea uh, of like fourth and 18, but you've got to figure out the, the problem of what happened. Like the defense cannot be given free reign to just blast a receiver. And also the, the, one of the things was you have to announce that you're doing it. So that eliminates the surprise on site. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Like what? I know, I know uh, on the pro football talk post of that, they had the moment at the top of the second half of the Super Bowl right. between the saints and the Colts. Yeah, that was the picture. Yeah. So I'm with you on that front yeah. too, but I'll call that an overreaction okay, until okay. we can figure out how the defense can be held to account. So they don't have to compete continuously um, you know, grab, keep, pull, then be allowed to grab right. and pull. I get it. And then the off and, and thus the defense though, isn't now subject to one penalty flips their entire fortune of a game that they've been dominating. I got to figure that out. And I place it. I think that's too gimmicky for a lot of old school owners. So let's hear what the, the okay. other, the other well, idea hopefully is. They can come up with something. Yes. All right. Last one. And maybe you heard some more about this uh, over the weekend. I'd be, I'd be curious your thoughts there. Sure. It'd be a mistake to add an 18th game to the regular season schedule. Here's what I think needs to be done. Cause I think it is inevitable. I've, I've heard it over and over and over and over again. You've heard it from fans over and over and over again. Boy, would it be great to have a national holiday the day after the Super Bowl, and thus pushing the season another week into the future. Or you could just would, have the Super Bowl fact, on Saturday. Would in fact, no, it would, in fact, have a President's Day week and the Super Bowl every year. The NBA wouldn't like having With the 18th the, game, yeah. But the 18th game would eventually shove the season deep enough where the Super Bowl is on President's Day weekend every year. 
Now, the issue with that is everything else would have to be pushed back. You're already hearing some complaints at the Combine of how quickly the Combine happens and how fast the new league year comes yeah, around after that. It does. Okay. It's true. Um, but um, I understand player safety issues are significant here. The one thing that I also heard from a coach at the Combine that is of interest is what's with the inactives? What's what's with the making you cut your roster down on game day by announcing people as inactive? Why can't everybody be active? Yeah, why do we? Because it's, like, it's eight guys, it's 53 this, to 45. Right. right. Why don't you add more players? I mean, it's more of a of a salary that you're paying. Well, game day bonus. But why yeah. don't have it like college, where it's just like 80 people are up on a Sunday? 70 people are up on a Sunday. Yeah, but like, the, well, you have the 53 plus your practice, practice squad. squad. So you have, Every, get, everybody's up. So What's with the practice? The practice so, squad's yeah. up. You're not elevating anybody from your practice squad, and you're not deactivating know. somebody who's been practicing all week. Like what gives? Like why not? Yeah. Like what? What? What's the big deal? Like why are you making? That's interesting. Yeah, people inactive. So I heard that. Okay. So maybe the give and take, because the coaches are also flipping out in the fact that the give from the league in the last collective bargaining agreement to the players, um, and I'm sure some players are like, we shouldn't have just given it up because there's a lot of money at stake here, is the practice schedule. Right. There's a bunch of coaches that want to get their hands on practice. players right now yeah. and get a new playbook in their hands, and they can't until the off-season workout program happens in the middle of April. I pushed back and told the uh, the coach who was talking to me about this. I'm like, well, I just remember when stuff happened when at the very beginning of NFL Network, everything that was supposedly voluntary for a player was considered mandatory mm -hmm. by the coach, and that got out of hand. Right. Where suddenly, well, you're not here in early March. Well, you're not here for the team. Right. Wait a minute. I can't I can't have you, you know, and in, in tell you you need to be at the facility in late late February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this this OTA that's voluntary. You're not here. Huh? Guess what? We're going to consider this mandatory, even though it's technically voluntary. It got out of hand. So they had to actually put some guardrails up. So when you say to make a mistake to add an 18th regular season game to the schedule, um, I understand you're talking about player safety. You're also talking about diluting a product. I'm also talking about load management. What's going to stop guys from just sitting well, out? That's weeks 15, 16, 17, 18. Like, if you already have your playoff spot locked up, why would Patrick Mahomes play in the last three weeks? No, and I, I, I understand that because you also need to get um, a rhythm going. I mean, how many of those top seeds that sat off, sat out? You know, it, it took them. It, it took the Ravens and the and the uh, Niners. Um, a bit to get started their divisional playoff victories. And the Niners had to pull that one out of the fire. The Ravens yeah. just like got all fired up at halftime and just destroyed the Texans. I guess. Uh, but that's but. why I'm saying like, if you do it, why not get more jobs and just keep people up? You know what I mean? Yeah. What, what are you, what, what's with the five inactives? That's what the coach is saying. We're like, what are we doing? Why can't we have them active? I think, I think it's so. Fair. So I, I'll push back and call that an overreaction. But you'll have to do it in conjunction with some other moves, like make more players available. When is it coming? Give me a give me a year. Oh, like, I don't know. Next next collective bargaining agreement. When the hell that that is? So four or five years, something. Probably like that. whatever. How I don't know how much is left, but yeah. but I think it is inevitable. Uh, that's it for this edition of Overreaction Monday. We are back next week on a Wednesday because the new league year begins on the Wednesday that we're going to be broadcasting. Uh, coming to you with another podcast, but that'll be after the two-day window where everybody's already talking. The tampering. Oh, yeah. it's, no, 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 no. What are we calling it, it's, it? uh, it's apparently not tampering. Uh, you know, you're yeah. you're legally able to start talking dollars okay. and cents with <laughs> okay. people who are not franchise tech, sure. who are free agents. So by the next time we're going to be talking to this microphone, we'll know who's pretty much going where, yep. and it'll just become official when the new league year hits. And that's our next edition of Overreaction Monday. But for the moment... Thanks for taking in this show right yeah. here. Chris Brockman, along with Rich Eisen. Hope you enjoyed this post-NFL Scouting Combine edition. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.